Now, let's discuss about the law of gearing or the condition for constant velocity ratio. So, for two gears to have a constant velocity ratio, what is the necessary condition? So, which is also called the law of gearing. Now, in this diagram, you can see that a portion of the both the meshed gear is shown. So, these blue lines, so they refer to a portion of uh, teeth on uh, gear 1 and this blue line, it uh, signifies the portion of the teeth on the gear 2. So, the gear 1 is rotating in uh, clockwise and the gear 2 is rotating in anticlockwise. And you can even see the pit circles which are represented. So, this is the pit circle of first gear and uh, this is the part of a pit circle of the second gear. Both the pit circles are, uh, they have intersected at the point P. Okay, point of contact P. So, point of contact P is not uh, here, it is exactly here. The blue line, uh, the straight line which is intersecting the uh, pit circle. So, that is the point of contact of the pit circle, which is also called pitch point. Now, at the point of contact of the two gears, okay, at the point of contact of two gears, if you try to draw a normal, so the normal drawn is Mn and at the same point, if you try to draw a tangent, the tangent is Tt with respect to point of contact. Now, if, uh, if we measure or if you want to consider what is the velocity of uh, the point of uh, contact, so here the point of contact is uh, represented as Q. So, the velocity of point of contact with respect to gear 1, okay, so it is given in the direction QC. So, the velocity of the point of contact Q is in the direction uh, QC, which is given by velocity V1. Similarly, the same point, if you consider with respect to gear 2, the velocity of Q with respect to gear 2 will be along the direction QD, so which is V2 which is V2 here, which is shown. Now, for both the gears to have a constant velocity ratio, okay, if you try to take the component of these V1 and V2, the component of these V1 and V2 uh, in the direction of normal should be same. So, for both gears to have a same velocity ratio, the component of this V1 and V2 in the normal direction at the point of contact should be same. And as you can see that this V1, okay, uh, the velocity vector V1 is making an angle alpha with respect to this normal. Okay. Similarly, this velocity vector V2 is making an angle beta with respect to this normal. So, uh, the same angles have been uh, shown here also. This is alpha and this is beta. Now, uh, as already told, so, to have a constant velocity ratio, their uh, component should along the normal should be same. So, you can say that V1 into cos alpha should be equal to V2 into cos beta. So, all those uh, equations I will be showing you in the next slide. So, what is uh, described here is uh, the no, uh, common tangent Tt and the common normal Mn at the point of contact Q which we have already seen and also uh, if the Q moves in the direction of QC okay so it moves in the direction QC when considered as a point on wheel 1 and it moves in the direction QD when considered as a point on wheel 2 and their velocities also we have seen what should be V1 and V2 and I have told you that uh, to maintain a constant uh, velocity ratio okay so their component along the normal should be same. So, here uh, according to that we have V1 cos alpha should be equal to V2 cos beta. So, this V1, okay, your tangential velocity can also be written as angular velocity into radius. So, radius, okay, and uh, so with respect to the diagram, so your uh, V1, okay, V1 can be written as angular velocity into distance from O1 to Q. Similarly, your V2 can be written as angular velocity 2 into O2 to Q and uh, this uh, uh, cos alpha, okay, cos alpha since the angle subtended uh, uh, 
uh, here alpha and this alpha are same so this triangle is equivalent to this triangle so triangle QCN okay QCE QCE is equivalent to M O1 and Q so according to that your cos alpha will become uh, adjacent by hypotenuse which is M O1 divided by Q O1 so in the same thing for the with respect to cos beta so so your Q D E triangle is similar to uh, O2 N as well as Q so b it's beta is sorry O2 N and this point pitch point okay pitch point um, sorry uh, no so your Q D N is similar to Q N okay O2 so this entire the angle uh, uh, the dotted pink line with respect to the dotted blue line that entire angle is beta so according to this your cos beta okay uh, will be adjacent by uh, hypotenuse adjacent side is O n and uh, the hypotenuse would be uh, O2 to O2 to this Q so that is written here so your cos alpha is uh, O1 M2 O1 Q and your cos beta would be O1 N2 O2 Q and uh, further simplifying this equation you can uh, strike out uh, O1 Q and O1 Q here similarly you can strike out uh, O2 Q and O2 Q so simplifying this equation so you'll get uh, omega 1 by omega 2 is equal to O2 N by O1 M now Uh, further this equation can further be simplified so from the similar triangles so he says that from similar triangles O1 MP okay so O1 MP so as you can see uh, this triangle so O1 MP is the uh, pitch point so O1 MP from similar triangle this and uh, this okay so O2 NP okay from those two similar triangles so this equation is further simplified so the ratio of angular velocity okay uh, will be equal to so this O2 N by uh, O1 M so whatever you have O2 N by so you have O2 N by uh, O1 M so be using the similar triangle concept so this triangle what you have here O2 N by O1 M okay will be equal to O2 P and uh, O1P so that has been considered and uh, the ratio of angular velocity okay is uh, inversely proportional to uh, the ratio of the distance from the pitch point to the center of the uh, respective gear so you can see that omega 1 by omega 2 is equal to uh, the ratio of the distance from the center of the gear 2 to the pitch point this is the distance from the center of gear 1 to the pitch point okay so uh, so according to this equation so the same thing has been uh, explained here so the ratio of angular velocity is inversely proportional to the ratio of distance of the point p from the center o1 and o2 or you can all, all, uh, all, all uh, also say that you can also say that so the common normal okay the common normal to the two surfaces at the point of contact q intersects the line of centers at point P which divides the center distance inversely as ratio of angular velocity so which means that so this uh, the common normal which is drawn MN okay divides the the center distance from O1 to O2 if you try to draw a line so this common normal divides the center distance O1 to O2 okay uh, as uh, inversely with inversely okay inversely proportional to the uh, the ratio of their angular velocity so if you take omega 1 by omega 2 so that would be equal to o2 p to o1 p so that is what it means so in order to have a constant velocity ratio for all the position of the gear okay all the position of the gear the point p the pitch point must be a fixed point 
so in other words you can also say that so whatever the normal which is drawn at the point of contact okay must always pass through the pitch point so the law of gearing according to law of gearing which says that the common normal which is drawn at the point of contact should pass always through the pitch point and from this uh, uh, derivation of the law of gearing we all we have we have also come to know that so the ratio of angular velocity omega 1 by omega 2 is inversely proportional to the distance from the center of the respective gear to the pitch point so now let's discuss the different forms of teeth so which means to say that what what would be the profile of the teeth in a gear so you have two types of profile that can be used the one is called a cycloidal and a, another profile would be involute so these are the two profiles on a gear tooth coming to a cycloidal profile so a cycloid is nothing but a curve okay uh, how do you get a cycloid curve so let's try to imagine this is a circle and you consider a point on a circle so as the circle rolls over the straight line as the circle rolls over the straight line without any slipping so the path traced by a point as it rolls will give you a cycloidal profile now if, if this circle rolls on the outside of the circle if this circle or which we are trying to consider the point which rolls on the outside of another circle bigger circle and the curve traced by that point is called the epicircle sorry uh, epicycloid if the same circle rolls on the inside okay if the same circle rolls on the inside surface so at that point of time it's called a hypocycloid so here in this diagram as you can see uh, so this is a straight line okay so these curves which are obtained p dash to a dash okay so p to a these are all epicircle and uh, b dash to p dash or b to p these are hypocycloid so both the curves are joined in order to get the uh, cycloidal profile so this is a cycloidal profile of the tooth so similarly here also it's the same thing so the same thing has been discussed here so what do you mean by a cycloid curve and uh, when do you get a epicycloid and a hypocycloid now and uh, this diagram also it represents the same thing so now coming to your involute uh, profile so talking about the involute profile so this profile is nothing but a curve okay which is uh, uh, obtained by tracing a point on a line so if you try to imagine a line let us say the line is tt okay so this is the line so try to imagine that uh, this line try to roll this line on the circle try to roll this uh, uh, line on the circle and a particular point on the line tt if you try to trace it as the line tt is uh, rolled over this uh, circle so the curve traced by that point will give you the involute profile so or this can also be imagined uh, in a manner uh, such that try to imagine that this entire circle is wound by a thread okay and uh, you try to uh, uh, unwound the thread so the tip of the thread as you try to unwound it so will give you the profile of the uh, involute curve now we'll see what is the effect of altering the center distance on velocity ratio so if you even try to change the center distance during operation so what is its effect on velocity ratio so now if you can see here uh, two uh, gear tooth which are meshed okay you have uh, the pit circle okay uh, similarly uh, the pit circle of the wheel 2 okay similarly you have the pit circle initial initial pit circle of the wheel 1 is represented by the blue lines and your pitch point uh, initial pitch point is p here and uh, the center of the first gear is o1 and the center of the second gear is o2 and um, at the point of contact if you try to draw a normal so at the point of contact so that normal is tangent to the 
the base circle of both the gears so the normal drawn here is mn okay mn is the normal and uh, the line which is drawn from o2 to n okay so so o2 to n so this is uh, uh, n is a point uh, where this normal intersects the base circle of the second gear and uh, similarly m is a point where uh, the normal intersects uh, the base circle of the gear 1 okay so uh, now if, if uh, the center distance is altered so meaning to say that uh, initially the the center of the gear 1 okay was at uh, o1 now let's say that it is slightly uh, moved downwards to a position o1 dash so in such cases uh, to make sure that it has a constant velocity ratio you know that uh, the normal which is drawn okay should pass through the pitch point and uh, this uh, normal should be tangent to the base circle so that is done here so the new position of the uh, gear 1 is uh, the center is o1 dash and uh, this is the new base circle and uh, so the point m will be shifted to m dash and uh, similarly n to uh, n dash so this is what happens when you try to shift the center distance and also you can see the pressure angle has changed from phi to phi 1 dash now we'll see what is its effect on velocity ratio uh, to see its effect let's uh, uh, initially consider the triangle uh, o2 okay n and p so p corresponds to the pitch point initial pitch point and uh, o2 np is the first triangle that i will be considering similarly uh, corresponding to that position i'll be considering uh, o1 uh, mp considering these two triangles okay so you can write down uh, so considering these two triangles we can write down that uh, o1 m okay o1 m divided by o2 n will be equal to o1 p and uh, divided by o2 p so that equation we can uh, write down so the same type of equations can be written down by uh, considering the second position of the gear which is at o1 dash so when the gear first gear is at o1 dash okay so we'll be considering the triangles o1 dash m dash p dash now the pitch point okay is it has moved down okay the pitch point it has moved down p dash so o1 m dash p dash and p dash n dash and o2 will be considering that now one thing that you can see here is uh, so the radius to the root circle o1 m will be equal to o1 dash m dash these two are nothing but the radius to the okay root circle of the first gear similarly here uh, even though the position has changed so o2 n will be equal to o2 n dash because it is nothing but the radius of the root circle so considering that we'll see few uh, equations which are written so this is the theory this is the theory uh, uh, which I just uh, described so from the similar triangles uh, what I told you so you can write down O1M by O2N is equal to O1P and O2P and uh, coming to the second set of arrangement when the gears have been moved down one of the gear is moved down so considering the similar triangles O2 N dash P dash O1 dash M dash P dash okay from that again you can write down this so uh, looking into this uh, uh, both the equation and I've already told you the radius okay so the O2 N dash is equal to O2 N and O1 dash m dash is equal to o1 m so these two equations are same ratios are same so we can equate okay o1 p divided by o2 p is equal to o1 dash p dash divided by o2 p dash so so that is what is said here so the radiuses are equal and you can equate the both the equations so you, from this uh, we can come to know that even though that you have altered the center distance within the limit so the velocity ratio remains unchanged or it remains the same provided the changing of the center distance should be within the limit but uh, uh, 
changing in uh, the center distance has uh, resulted in uh, okay increase in pressure angle so that is what we can come to know so by uh, so looking at the title what is the effect of altering the center distance on velocity ratio so you can alter the center distance uh, within a certain limit so within that limit the velocity ratio remains constant it remains unchanged so now uh, we have seen two profiles of gear one was the involute gear and another one was a cycloidal gear so we'll see what are the advantages of both now uh, coming to what is the advantage of involute gear now if, so uh, even though you try to change the center distance even though uh, you uh, center distance is slightly altered okay um, so in such cases you can use involute gear because the velocity ratio won't be affected so you can change the center distance but the velocity ratio won't be affected but this is not true in case of cycloidal gear so to obtain a particular velocity ratio the center distance should be uh, fixed you cannot alter the center distance when you are coming when you are using a cycloidal gear and uh, uh, coming with respect to pressure angle so the pressure angle uh, in case when if you are using an involute gear from the start of engagement to the end of engagement uh, the pressure angle almost remains constant it's all it's always constant but uh, in a cycloidal gear the pressure angle varies from maximum to zero and again zero to maximum so from the beginning of engagement to the uh, <coughs> pitch point so your pressure angle will uh, uh, um, so it means that the pressure angle would be maximum the pressure angle would be maximum initially and uh, from the beginning of engagement to the pitch point it slowly reduces and becomes zero at the pitch point and uh, from the pitch point to the end of engagement okay again it uh, slowly it will increase so in a involute gear the pressure angle remains constant and in a cycloidal gear it varies from maximum to zero and zero to maximum now uh, coming to uh, <coughs> the ease of manufacturing okay so we are talking about the involute gear so the involute uh, the curve the entire profile of the tooth can be generated using a single curve so as we have seen uh, how involutes are uh, generated so the entire curve is uh, generated from a single um, curve whereas in a cycloidal gear okay so the entire profile of the curve the cycloidal okay so the upper part the face part and the flank part are generated by two different curves one is an epicycloid and one is a hypocycloid so uh, involute curves uh, sorry the uh, yeah involute uh, teeth are much more easy to manufacture compared to cycloidal teeth now what is the advantage of uh, cycloidal gear so the cycloidal gears have a wider flank okay so because of this wider flank they are much more stronger compared to involute gear uh, for the ga same given pitch and also if there is a large amount of wear and tear so it is advised to use a cycloidal gear okay compared to involute gear so they can withstand uh, the the amount of wear which happens in cycloidal gear is less compared to that of an involute gear and uh, in case of a uh, cycloidal gear so the interference uh, doesn't occur so what do you mean by interference okay so interference is when two gears are in mesh okay so when the uh, top land or the tip of the tooth comes and uh, uh, digs into the root of the another tooth uh, by removing material so so that is called interference so this doesn't happen in case of a cyclo cycloidal tooth <coughs> 